Listen to the word. He, 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 he. Garbage. A joke. Clown axe. Pisses me off. No. Come find no. me. No. 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 He. No. Come find me. Listen to the word. He. Come find he. me. He. 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 Garbage. A joke. Clown axe. Pisses me off. I ain't a hard guy to find. I promise you that shit. He. Listen to the word. Garbage. A joke. Clown axe. Pisses me off. What is up, ladies and gentlemen? It is Tuesday morning or Tuesday afternoon, almost noon kickoff over here on the Film Guy fam over on patreon.com forward slash Brooks Austin. If you're catching us on YouTube, I'm here to tell you, you're only going to see about the first four or five guys that we watch. We are previewing the class of 2023. Obviously, class of 2022 just wrapped up about a week ago, a week ago tomorrow with the traditional National Signing Day. So 2022 is in the books. OK, apart from some late enrollees, some late guys, I don't think there's any, uh, you know, guys taking it to March or excuse me, taking it to uh, June. So the, the class is pretty much wrapped up, which means a lot of people with a lot of questions about what's to come in 2023. One thing I've learned about running a business that revolves around Georgia football is you guys always want to know what's next. You enjoy what's right now. You enjoy what you got, but you're really, really looking forward to and always looking at what is on the horizon. So today we're going to bring you those names and those guys you need to pay attention to in the class of 2023. If you're watching us live on YouTube right now, you're a member of our Patreon service. We are over on Discord right now in the lounge. Those guys will hop in here as they see fit um, with any questions, suggestions, anything like that. These 2023 film reviews, after I get through the guys that I want to talk about, we're going to open it up to the floor and take some suggestions from the team. I do have to take a moment to thank our keynote sponsor. That is Gramco, the Gramco.com over there for all of your Delta 8 needs, including my favorite product, which is the Wake and Bake Coffee. It's where it's at, guys. You know, I can't live without my coffee, and you know, I now have a new favorite. It's a medium Colombian roast. I got to tell you, I'm not, I always drink coffee for the caffeine. This is a coffee that I actually enjoy, and I'm not just telling you that in terms of the taste and the profile. And it's, of course, it's got the Delta 8. Uh, added in there from Gramco's own hemp plants with the perfect 20 milligram of Delta 8 per cup. It's the perfect way to kick off your morning. Save 25% today by using promo code Brooks25. I've been asking you to support those guys. They are supporting us. Go visit their website. Go tell them I sent you. Use that promo code uh, Brooks25. And again, if you're not into the Delta 8 stuff, they got CBD ointments. They've got CBD pills. They've even got, uh, you know, tablets rather. They've even got stuff uh, for your animals. If you got any animals with separation anxiety, things like that, they've got CBD products for those pups and kittens. Appreciate you guys for being here. Let's get in and grind this tape. Look, I, I think it's important that we identify a position, not necessarily of need for Georgia, but one where they're going to have to make some decisions, okay? And that position for me is none other than the running back room, okay? There are four names right now that I can tell you are really, really high on the board up in Athens. We're going to go through them in no particular order today, but I would imagine of these four names, if Georgia can just manage to sign two of them, it'll be one of the highest rated running back classes they've ever had at Georgia. And they've had some damn good ones, okay? Pairing Michelle and Chubb, uh, going back to the Swift days. I think they paired him with Brian Herring in a class. So they've had some really good classes. Elijah Holyfield, I think, was matched up in that class as well. They've had some really, really good ones. This could potentially be their best. And that's saying a lot coming from this university. So we're going to start with these guys. Four in a row. We're going to load them up, and it's about all you're going to get on YouTube. We're going to go for a full hour, brought to you by Gramco over on Patreon, okay? So we're going to take a look at Justice Haynes, Richard Young, Ruben Owens, and Trayon Webb, who I believe are the four names that they're going to have to identify and pick and choose, and vice versa. Those players are going to have to end up selecting Georgia. Again, they just land two of these guys. They're good to go for this 2023 recruiting class at the running back position. Honestly, it's one of the deepest classes I think we've seen on the on the running back circuit in particular in quite a while. So I'm excited to watch these guys with you today, starting with a guy that I think, if he remains in Georgia for his senior year, will absolutely obliterate the state record for total yardage on the ground. Definitely going to obliterate the total career carries. And that is a uh, son of former hobnail boot specialist himself, uh, Veron Haynes, Justice Haynes, out of currently... Blessed Trinity up here near the Woodstock area. So let's grind the tape on this young man. Appreciate you guys for being here today. Let's get after it.
All right, so these are all blind reviews. I saved these junior tapes for film studies with you guys for this particular reason, okay? I guarantee you he's going to house this sucker. Yep, 99 yards out the gate. Now, the thing you'll notice about Justice is that's against Eagles Landing Christian Academy. This dude running him down or, or trying to run him down, that's a 6'3 corner that's got a Georgia offer, just to let you know. Um, Anyways, about Justice, what you're going to notice is never, ever, ever is he running into a light box. There are always seven, eight defenders. They play cover zero against Western Trinity. They always have. They always will. Nobody in the middle of the field because they've got to, got to load the box to stop 22, and everyone does it. This is a guy in his high school career as they run the Clemson draw here that's had about, you know, 24 carries a game for three years. It's it, He's been toting it a lot. So this natural awareness didn't come naturally. This is stuff that has come through ingrained amount of reps. He's obviously naturally gifted, seeing as his father played nine years in the league at this specific position. But this type of stuff is learned through thousands and thousands of reps and carries. This a natural uh, vision and awareness and, and running capabilities. I always love watching guys, even the minor details of bending this ball back to the left, right? We talked about it uh, with Andrew Paul's film study. These minuscule little things and details you might not notice because he's out running around on a high school field, those are the things that end up leading to big explosive runs when they get to the college level and people can actually run them down. Love his short area quickness as well. I don't know what the top end speed looks like. I'm not going to tell you that I may or may not have had a hand time on some uh, camps that I've seen him at. I think he's around a 4-5-2 guy, okay? By the end of his college career, I think he'll be around that 4-4-8, 4-4-9 type of ability. And you'll see the ball skills are really, really elite from this young man, okay? This is a full, well-rounded back. He always will be, always has been on tape, despite the fact that he's in a heavy, heavy power running game scheme there at Blessed Trinity. You're seeing them right now. Guys, they are fullback heavy. They are downhill. You're going to get a traditional one-cut read, okay? This is not stretch zone. This is not wide zone. This is not RPO schemes. This is modern iso ball, counter ball, uh, you know, power ball type stuff, all right? And, yeah, it matches his running style as well. You'll see him on tape. He looks like he's about, what, 206, 205, and he is about that. But the dude is bricked up, man. He is rocked up. He has spent a good time in the weight room throughout his high school and college careers, or high school career, rather, and preparatory career. Yeah, Ruth. So I, I think for him, it's a great question, Roos, because in, in high school, he was bell cow, right? In high school, I mean, if you looked up his stats right now, SSL, do that for me. Go to Max Preps and check out how many career carries he's got through three years. I bet it's north. I swear to God, I bet it's north of 500. This dude's toted it a lot, okay? So he's been the bell cow throughout high school, which makes me wonder, and I've watched him, does he get better as the game leads on? Because that'll tell you, like, his success is determined upon the amount of carries, right? I think Kendall Milton's one of these guys. Kendall Milton is really, really good with six, seven, eight carries a game. But his premier, like his peak of what he could be, is him toting it 23, 24 times a game like an NFL back would, okay, and like a real number one back would. Well, no one gets to do that at Georgia. So I think Justice is more of one of these, quote-unquote, all-around backs where – I don't know if he can pass, bro, because I can tell you right now he's never had to, okay, not on a real level. He's always been the keynote focus of the offense. Even when he's going out to pass, what are they doing? They're designing screen passes for him right here. But did you see how he caught the football? How he doesn't catch the football in his chest? How he catches the football with his hands separated from his chest, right? Real soft, natural hands. That tells me he could be a threat on third down. He could be a threat out of the backfield on swing routes, angle routes, things like this. If you want to split him out, maybe take him deep. He could probably track it over his shoulder. And here's how I know that. Well, he's been playing baseball for 10 years. Okay, longer than that. He's also, you know, one of these other guys in this 2023 class that very seriously could contemplate a career in Major League Baseball as well. That is not hyperbole. That is God's honest truth. This dude could play in Major League Baseball if he wanted to. Yeah, no doubt, Ruth. 
a heavy runner for a guy this size. Okay, a really heavy runner for a guy this size. I love the jump cuts, though. Okay, how he comes to balance, right? How he comes to balance, hits the jump cut, gets his feet back in the ground, and then does it again. I personally would probably feel a lot more comfortable in college if this were a second and medium, third and long type of back to start his career. I'm not going to hand him 25 college totes anytime soon. Not personally. He's been taking a beating in high school, man. Let him get a breather. Let him learn the system. Let him operate. And then let him explode. I, I've, I've been asked. You guys always ask me for comparisons. When I watch the tape, okay, and I don't see the top end speed of a Travion Henderson because Travion Henderson, the, the all-world, all-American freshman out there at Ohio State, that dude was like a 6-6-60 runner, runner in high school, okay? 60 meters. That's, that's almost Olympic-level type speed. I, I don't know if that's here, but this dude never gets caught. And even when he does, again, the subtle movements, watch him bend this back. Okay, these guys are running to the pylon, right? They're all running to the pylon. That's what they're coached. That's what they're taught from when they were little kids and they first start running pursuit drill. So as running backs, we always want to cut that angle back off because they're not, once we cut there, they're not going to be able to readjust with us. They're just going to gas down, gear down, call it quits, let you run into the end zone. You said 275 carries. 275 carries over 12 games is north of 24 carries a game. That's, that's a good bit of totes, man. As I, I have completely. I completely rolled over my uh, headphone cable. That's what you saw over on YouTube. It's probably funny. Um, Nonetheless, as I get a phone call, don't know who that is. Canton, Georgia, probably important. We'll hang it up and call him back. Um, really, really top end guy, a really, really high level uh, football IQ. Tell you a story. You guys know in person evaluations are invaluable for me. Um, in person evaluation for you. Some dads, especially if they played in the league, they can tend to coach every once in a while. So, dad, you know, after the game is kind of talking to Justice and saying, hey, man, like, look, I thought backside cut was there all day. And Justice was like, yeah, it was, but that outside linebacker, like, it looked like it, it was there, but that outside linebacker was hanging on just a little bit long, and I didn't feel like I could stick my foot in the ground and get back that way. Th th those conversations, I can't explain to you how valuable they are because most 17-year-old kids don't get to have that high-level IQ conversation on a consistent basis, right, where, like, that's what – You've been taught, bred, listened to all day of your whole life, right? That type of stuff. Um, we're here. We're we're being told we can't hear the uh, the sound through the speakers from the Discord. Sorry, guys. Um, I'll fix that. We, it's come through on Streamyard multiple times. Don't know what's going on there. We'll get it fixed. Let's move on to the next one. Uh, we got Richard Young coming up next. Now you talking about a big dude? For my preliminary scouting, this this is the big guy of them all. And he's not huge either. He's about 6'1", about 205. This isn't like when I say he's not huge, he's not Derrick Henry big, but who is? You know what I mean? All right, Junior sees a highlight here. Here we go. Pistol formation. Wide gaps here from this offensive line. More jump cuts there. You can just see he's a much more vertical runner than Justice was, right? Or Justice is, rather, on tape. You see how when he when he comes through the hole, and even when he's a approaching the hole, look at the pad level. Look how high he is. Okay, Now, there's no right or wrong. I prefer you to run behind your pads, as coaches talk about how we want to have a little bit of a forward lean. I don't see much of that here from Richard. There's very little forward lean. There's very little knee drive. Okay? We showed you what knee drive looks like on this channel, right? See how his knee, right? His knees never get to 90 degrees. They never get to parallel. It tells me 
Okay, the, the, the hip abductors, right, that were, when you guys have hip pointers back in the day, when your hip hurts from literally right there on your belt loop, right there on your belt line, that's your hip abductor. Those are tight. That's what's, that's what's limiting the ability to drive that knee up. Those are things that scouts were paying close attention to, or at least I am. I don't know about everybody else. Feel free to talk, guys. If, if the YouTube video can't hear you, I'll restate your question for the audience, okay? So don't feel like they're missing out on anything. We'll restate it for him. There's that above average forward lean. I like the leg drive once he reaches contact, right? This is this is powerful lower half. They may be tight, but they're powerful, right? When you got people hanging on your quads, hanging on your ankles, hanging on your shoes, and you can pull them out, stick them back in the ground, and get acceleration again, that's impressive. And to do it there at the end as well. Just a tough runner, dude. Check out that linebacker. He beefy, isn't he? He looks bigger than his defensive lineman. Hmm. I am concerned. I'm concerned about the tight hips, man. He could. It just like when I'm looking at running backs, I want to see fluidity. Right, Same thing with any skill position guy. When I'm trying to measure, the question was, why am I concerned about the tight hips, by the way? I'm concerned because I, I want to see things look natural and fluid for you. Now, this could be something that could be cleaned up very, very easily. Maybe it's that he back squats way too much and he never front squats. Or he's not power clinging properly. Or if there's just made a minor misalignment in his body. There could be something that causes this, Rudes. It's no different than, you know, a, a, a puncher having one specific hole in his game where one great coach and one great striking, uh, you know, tactician might clean it out, might get rid of it. Same thing with uh, at a school like the University of Georgia or any Power 5 school this guy's looking at or is looking at him. They might look at it and say, hey, whatever, you know, things we need to clean up, we can clean up pretty quickly. No doubt. I'm starting to realize why I thought he was so much bigger than he is. I thought, oh, wow. I thought this was like a 6'3 guy, but he runs at 6'3. He runs extremely high and hard, okay? First tackler, not going to get him, right? First tackler, not going to get him. Hmm. I like the multiple cut runs. That should have been, oh, he got he got ran down there. He got ran down from Tyler from the backside. But he's, you know, this guy's got an angle and full speed, and, and Richard's just now starting to get back into it. Hmm. Into the Wildcat here? This is what I love about high school defensive coordinators. Hey, coach, that's the quarterback, okay? They've got two tight ends over here, and they've put two running backs to the right of the quarterback. Where do you think they run in the ball, B? Like, come on. Guys loafing around. Guys running, like, walking over to their sideline or their side of the, the formation late. And, of course, he scores. Of course he scores. See what he's got here. I, guys, forget me, or forgive me if I'm wrong, but I don't see – this is a big run here. We'll see if he, he tops it off. He does. He gets some good blocking downfield. I don't see electricity when I watch this tape. I, again, I could be wrong. It could be just the angles. That's why, again, I haven't seen the guy in person. I haven't seen him on a Friday night. But to me, when I turn on tape of a Power 5 guy, a top 100 type recruit at the running back position, I expect to see electricity. We saw it all over Andrew Paul's tape, did we not? All over Andrew Paul's tape. This looks like a really, really good and above average college player. To me, it doesn't quite look like a top 25 runner. Okay. That's just me personally. Who's up next? We got an option here. We'll let the Discord decide. Ruben Owens or Trayon Webb? SSL, give me something. Rudes, somebody give me something. All 
All right, we're going to go with Trayon Webb. I hope Trayon Webb's got junior tape at the running back position. Um, this is a guy who obviously was the first ever commit in the 2023 class for Georgia and has since decommitted, flirted around with Oklahoma for a while, decommitted from there when the coach changes, uh, when coaches changes happened. Um, yeah, and now is back on the open market. And he wants people to talk, so let people talk, apparently. Let's go watch this. Uh, young guys watching this at home, don't do that. We know who you are. Coaches know who you are. That's why I'm here to watch the tape. Big boys in front of him. That's a big dude. That's a really, really big kid. He's gotten massive. Long strides and thick, thick quads. As this was a kid that might be might have had to play corner in college when he was a freshman or sophomore and committed to Georgia. They were looking at him at both. He didn't know what he was going to end up playing. And then Frick, his junior year, he shows up and he's damn, looks like 215 pounds right here. He's big. That's a big kid. I bet you're going to see some physical runs here, man. I would imagine. Yeah, guys just hanging on him. This is Trinity Christian down in Florida. God, he gallops, doesn't he? He doesn't even run. He gallops. Does he finish that? He does. This is almost like I know he's wearing three, but watch how when he gets into open field and he starts to sprint, how his chest rises up, okay? His chest is going to rise up, and that knee drive starts to pick up, okay? It's very, very, you guys are Georgia fans. You know who I'm about to say, I would hope. It's very, very Todd Gurley-esque. Okay, watch him. When he gets north and south and see how vertical he gets and how he almost looks like he's leaping. That, to me, looks like a, a video replica of uh, uh, Todd Gurley's kickoff return touchdown as a freshman against Middle Tennessee State. Okay? That where it's almost like his chest is back and he looks like, he, like I said, like he's galloping, not like he, oh my. Oh, my. Sir, what? Sir, what? The contact balance. You work these drills all day as a running back. This is like what you do. Both feet in the air. This is a tackle for 99% of athletes. I mean, how much more of a compromised position could you get in as a running back? It doesn't get much worse, right? He falls down, puts his hand in the ground, keeps great ball security. Look, the ball's still tight to his chest, right? Keeps great ball security, pops back up, shows a short area quickness and acceleration, gets north to south and, and takes it to the crib. When I talk about electricity, when I say I don't, I, I want to see some electric stuff, that's it. That's it right there. And I told you we'd see some physicality in the runs. The, the top end speed is, 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 again, questionable, but this is a big back. This is a guy that's 215 pounds, and he's playing in South Florida and still running away from some guys. He's getting caught, however. But even when you catch him, he's like, I'm 215 pounds. I got a wicked stiff arm. There's no way you're going to tackle me before I get to the pylon. I like how he pressed the block. Watch him. He's going to deliver this guard to this front side, inside linebacker. Wham. Okay, deliver him, bounce out. Hmm. This would be my Evander Holyfield to whatever uh, DeAndre Swift I would pair him with, by the way. If you're wondering what I'm thinking as a, as a coaching staff, I would take one of these big bruisers, okay, that I felt most comfortable about. I would take one of these big bruisers, and then I'd find me a, a three-down guy. This very well could be – I don't want to put those expectations on him, but this looks like watching Ty Gurley in high school. Big, thick guy from the lower half, you know, gets into open space and and looks like he's a 4'6 a, a runner, but for some reason never gets caught. And even when he does, he stiff arms the hell out of people. That looks like it hurt. All right, so if we're ranking currently, I would go Justice 1 – Trayon Webb, two. Richard Young, three. Let's go find out about Reuben Owens. Huh, boys? 
and girls, if you're watching. Who's that? Justice? Uh, just more of a, a, a well-rounded, complete back so far. The question was, why do I have Justice number one? Sorry. Said I would repeat them. I haven't been. All right, so a couple things. Anytime you flip on a, a tape from a kid from Texas, just understand that the speed is different, right? The speed is different. That's why, you know, Michael Bowling or what is it? Is it Michael Bowling? The 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 track guy? White Lightning? Um, there's a yeah, he he's from Texas. Okay. He's from Texas. They can move. All right. Here we go. Let's watch it. Some Ruben Owens here. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Um Hey, out of the power eye, royalty, I would agree. Let's see what he does here. Just shifty as hell. With the juice. Easy juice, too. Tall. Looks pretty lanky and thin, thinned out, right? It tells us the frame can hold some more weight. Nuh-uh. Uh-uh. No. No. Oh! Oh! No! No! All right, look, man. Number four had a family dog. Number four had a family dog. You ain't had to do that. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. I'm hoping this one of these is a camera over here, and I'm hoping they got that. I don't think they did. Bro, they out here running the triple. Contact balance, just power. That's all lower half, by the way. When dudes are just all over your back, watch. Dudes are just all over your back. You drive through it. And then all this, and you're basically touching the ground. You do touch the ground. It's all lower half. Super strong. Oh, the peep on the sideline? This kid's got swag, too? Who's he looking at? This dude must have been talking hella shit. Who's he looking at? And then he gasses? Stop. Stop. All right, but let's talk about it, right? You see, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yep. Electricity, electricity. Even when you're playing Kyle's, Tyler's, and Andrew's, you best be running away from them. You best be pulling away from them. Transition, okay? So we're going to see some, some issues going from high school to college, right, because of level of competition. We know that. Um, that's everyone, some more than others, right? Um, but you're also going to have to see a transition period between – I've been running triple my whole life. I've been looking at asses and elbows from the offensive lineman in front of me. So now I'm going to be reading six foot five bodies on the stretch, on the move, right? That's a different type of run scheme. That's a different type of look. That's a different type of everything for a back who's just been used to going downhill and sticking his foot in the ground on the first thing he sees, right? Numero uno, guys. Yeah. That's a, that's a, I mean, I, I think he's about 6'1", 6'2". He looks tall. Um, he also looks like freaking Reggie Bush out here. He also looks like Reggie Bush out here. Good God. Uh-uh. Yeah, that's the number one back in America, and you can't tell me nothing different. Nothing different. That's the number one back in America. 